Hey, what's up? Tristan from Huge Menace here with another ND add-on update video. Once again, we got some cool new features and enhancements to go through today, so stick around as we have a look at everything that's happened in version 1.28. Okay, so the first feature I want to show you today is a fun little menu that we've added called Fast Predict. So if you hit the F key while in the 3D viewport, you get this new menu that comes up and it's pretty smart. So what it does is basically look at the scene, see what mode you're in, sort of the context of everything around you, what object you have selected, maybe what you know, modifies that object has applied. And by hitting F, it's going to try and predict what is going to be the next most common or useful operation that you'd like to perform. So to give you a bit of a demonstration, uh, let's just go to the top view here. I'm going to hit F and I want to choose Add Plane, right? And then I'm going to jump into Edit Mode with Vertex Select and select these top two vertices here. Now I'm going to hit F again and you can see the context has changed. So it thinks, okay, what's the next most common thing I might want to do when I have these vertices selected? So you know, what I want to perform here is a vertex bevel, so it got that right. Let's select this and give it a bit of a bevel here and click to select and go back to object mode. Now, what I have in front of me is just a sort of planar sketch and if I hit F again, uh, you can see now I've got a few different options. So, you know, the next most common thing I probably want to do is solidify the sketch and you can do that. Uh, again, hit F again, now it's changed. So maybe we want to do a bevel and that's probably exactly what I wanted to do in this point. So you can see it, it's just trying to, you know, read what you have selected, what's in your scene and give you some useful predictions as you go along. Now it doesn't just end there. So if we, for instance, grab this object, shift D duplicate it and just move it along to the side here, let's select this and then shift select the target object. And as you can expect now, if you hit F, it predicts, hey, maybe you want to create, you know, a Boolean uh, or mirror it or circular array or snap a lot. And so let's choose difference in this case. So there you go. Um, and again, like I said, it depends on what you have selected as well. So if we select this Boolean uh, reference object here and hit F, you can see, okay, well, maybe now you want to hydrate this or swap the solver mode for it. So I think this is a really fun way uh, to not only f uh, probably learn the add-on if you're new to ND uh, or non-destructive modeling, it's a great way to see, hey, what can I do next given what I've got selected? And for more seasoned users, it's a great way to just get going and, you know, get the most popular, more common operators up in front of you without having to drill through uh, all of the options in the main menu. So hope you guys enjoy that. I'd love to hear your feedback on this one. And obviously as the add-on keeps updating, that menu will hopefully just get smarter and smarter as it goes. Now this next little enhancement, I know some of you will be very excited about. I know I am. Uh, if I just grab this plane, for instance, and I'm just gonna run a solidify, it doesn't really matter what the operator is. Uh, at the moment, there are currently a few different ways to change an overlay's option value. So for instance, if you have you know, mouse values enabled in the add-on preferences, you can just move the mouse you know, back and forth to change a value. Uh, you can also use your scroll wheel or the up and, out, up and down arrow keys, for instance. Uh, but we've added another option now, and that's simply to type in a specific value. Uh, now that's pretty awesome because sometimes you want to be a bit more precise than just wiggling your mouse around or using the scroll wheel um, and now you can do that. Now one thing to note is when you do type in a custom value, it puts that particular option into a manual override mode and just locks that in place. So we don't want you to obviously type in a value and then accidentally move your mouse and uh, change it. So it'll just lock that in place and then obviously if you change to a different operation, you can still use mouse values there or simply type in a specific value as well to lock that in. Now, if you want to change this again, you can either hit the backspace key a few times to undo everything and then type in a different value or you can simply hit the X key to reset that back to its default value and enable whatever default input mode you have or prefer. Now, if you don't want to use the X key, that's fine. If you go to the add-on preferences, uh, under the key map, there is an option here to change that reset option key to something else. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that. I know I'm pretty excited to use that because I like to be a bit more precise sometimes uh, with my values. Uh, the next little enhancement is definitely going to save some time in the long run. So again, I'm just going to grab, uh, for instance, this plane. Let's run a solidify and do that. I'm going to shift D, duplicate that and just create a duplicate over here. Now on this original uh, cube, I'm just gonna run a weighted normal bevel. 
um, and lock that into place. Now, if I do a Boolean operation on this, you will notice something is that the Boolean is now automatically placed, uh, sorry, let me just select the right object, is automatically placed under the weighted normal bevel. So previously, if you had done this with um, a version pre-128, um, you would have ended up with something that looks like this, which, you know, yeah, it's a bit how you're going. Um, so, you know, with um, the latest update, it'll automatically place these, you know, Boolean operations underneath uh, either a weighted normal bevel or a single segment bevel with hardened normals uh, or any other bevel that has more than, you know, one segment. So this is usually something you want to place uh, above your Boolean operations. You can obviously still come to the modifier stack and reorder things if you want to. It doesn't quite get it right, but hopefully this would save a little bit of time uh, as previously, you would have to move this manually after doing a Boolean operation. All right, so while we're on the topic of Booleans, uh, if we, for instance, take these two cubes here and run a Boolean difference, uh, you'll notice that something weird is going on here. Now, this is usually down to the fact that you know, the target object here has a Boolean operation on it and the solver is set to fast mode. Um, so whenever you have two objects, especially when they share coplanar faces, this fast solver mode just doesn't quite cut the mustard. Um, easiest way to solve that is to select the exact mode, and that'll sort that out. Now, obviously, fast, as it says on the tin, is a lot faster than exact, so you don't want to be going and setting exact on every single Boolean that you have. Um, but if you do run into this problem, and you don't want to go drilling through the modifier stack to find that, you can select... Uh, a boolean operation, uh, the utility, sorry, and then open up the utils menu and we have a new swap solver. So when you open this up, you can basically tap the S key to cycle through the different solver modes um, and quickly, you know, figure out what it is you need to have selected in order to create a boolean that looks more like what you'd expect. Well, the cool thing about swap solve is you can actually use this on multiple boolean utilities um, at once so that's a hell of a lot quicker than you know going through them manually and finding all of those boolean operations and swapping the solve mode on them so an additional little option we've added to the bevel operator here and a couple of others is this angle mode you have here so you know, while using a bevel, you can tap the A key to switch between 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees for the edge angle limit. Now, those ones there will actually be following along with the settings we have added into the preferences under general. And this is the basically the default angle to use for bevel and smoothing operations. So you can choose 30 degrees, 45, and 60. So by default, it's set to 30, but if we set this to 60 degrees and then go back and run a bevel, you notice the default is set to 60. Uh, so that's just a great way to customize that. And, you know, we've chosen those three because they're probably the, the most popular ones, but if there's enough demand and you want to be able to supply, for instance, your own custom values, let me know in the comments below and we'll have a look at doing that. So one other thing we've added to bevel operators as well, at least most of them anyway, is this new enhanced wireframe mode that you can use, uh, which you can toggle by using the W key. Um, so if you do that, you'll notice you get a, a wireframe that comes up and that's just an easy way to see um, basically a representation of the topology that's created while using a bevel. Uh, but one where it's really useful as well is if for instance, we have this cube here, um, I'm just gonna add in a new plane. Let me just scale this down. And then I'm gonna go into edit mode with vertex select. And you notice I can't actually see what's happening here because this plane is sitting in the middle of this cube. Uh, whereas if I bring up vertex bevel and then tap W, uh, you can actually still see now what's going on, even though this thing is sitting right in the middle of the cube. So just a nice way to get a bit of visual indicator of what's happening when you run uh, different sorts of bevels. Now, if you were paying close attention, you would have noticed we have actually added in a new submenu called Simplify. So what we have in here are two more modifiers, Decimate and Weld. Uh, I won't go through a grand example of how to use them, but there's really handy for doing a bit of topology cleanup uh, after doing, you know, multiple Boolean operations and bevels and all sorts. So there's a great way to help, you know, prepare your mesh for maybe a weighted normal bevel or some sort of final process. Now, at some point during your modeling process, you're going to be, you know, kind of complete with what you've done from a non-destructive standpoint, and you want to unwrap this, you know, model for texturing and whatnot. So uh, previously, you'd have to go through and basically collapse this mod stack um, and do it manually one by one. So we've kind of added a little 
handy utility to do that for you. So if you have an object selected or multiple objects selected, just open up the utils menu and hit this apply modifiers button here. Uh, that'll basically go through the mod stack, apply all the applicable modifiers, but leave off, for instance, a weighted normal bevel or a triangulate modifier right at the end, which you probably don't want to collapse just yet. So a handy little option we've added to the screw operator is the ability to flip the face normal. So if you tap the F key, you can actually flip the normals right here from this operator. Because uh, there are situations where you've drawn out a profile and you use a screw operator and it doesn't quite get the face orientation correct the first time round. Uh, but don't fret, you know, if you don't get it right over here, you can always still come down to the screw modifier and under normals, just click the flip option here. Now it is one of those things if you bring up uh, the screw modifier again, it, it's just recallable. So if you don't get it right there, you don't want to go through the modifier stack to find that, you can still just tap F from over here and lock that in. So Recompoly has had a new little option added to it, and that is this thing called Natural Rotation. So with Natural Rotation enabled, let's say if we create a square, um, it actually looks like it's orientated correctly. If we turn this to no, then you sort of get this triangular shape, which was the default behavior, you know, previous to version 1.28. Uh, you can still switch between them, um, but with Natural Rotation enabled, when we do increase the segment count, it'll keep the... Uh, this rightmost edge sort of perpendicular to the x-axis and then with natural rotation disabled you basically get the uh, the point sort of arriving uh, right on that x-axis there and there's, there's use cases for both you can just easily change that now right from the operator so there were a few more small updates and fixes which i won't go through in this video if you want to see the full list check out the change log in the documentation there's a link in the video description uh, if any of you are keen to help support the ongoing development and maintenance of the ND add-on, we do have a Patreon uh, with two tiers, Triangle and Quad, uh, each with their own benefits. Now I want to give a massive shout out and thank you to our first Quad tier Patreon, Another Human. Uh, your support is much appreciated. Uh, we also like to thank everyone that's opted to send some money our way when downloading the add-on from Gumroad. Anyways, hope you've enjoyed these updates. Don't forget to subscribe and join us on Discord. There's a link in the description below.